from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. This is the Countess Tatolia. Oh, yes. My mate tells me that you were trying to reach me by telephone. That's right, Countess. I want to talk to you. Where are you now? Well, at my residence, of course. Did you think I might come running immediately to your hotel, Mr. Dollar? Not after hearing your description. I'm seldom that lucky. What is it exactly that you wish to talk about? A hundred thousand dollars worth of diamonds and a dead man. I'm a special investigator. I for know the... who you are. I investigate before I call you. Well, not only beautiful, but clever. This ought to be interesting. I'm afraid I don't entirely understand your uh, flippancy. Then suppose I come over and explain it to you. Say around eight o'clock? I'll make a definite effort to be here. You know something, Countess? I think it's about time somebody built a small fire right under that lovely little complacency of yours. I'll be there at eight with matches. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Algiers, North Africa, to the Home Office Transworld Fidelity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Lorco Diamonds Matter. Expense account continued. Item four, $6.80, dinner and appetizers. I'm never any good trying to spar with a lovely female suspect on an empty stomach. I was finishing up on black Algerian coffee and white Algerian brandy when a slightly green-eyed Algerian police inspector sauntered up to my table. Bonjour, Monsieur Dunner. You special investigators really do live well. In the lap of luxury. Pull up a chair, Inspector. Join me in a sarsaparilla? It is on your expense account. Be my guest. <laughs> Merci, monsieur. Ah, bon, bon. My favorite brand. Help yourself. Merci. Anything new? Mm, nothing at all. A complete impasse. Allez, votre santé. Mm -hmm. What about the man who sat next to that courier on the plane? Find out anything about him? No, I'm still working on it. Which is to say, of course, my men are working on it. Ah, uh, you police inspectors really do live well. I have to do my own legwork. Ah, but the glory, Monsieur Dollar, to come into a mysterious affair which has all the local police baffled, and to solve it immediately in one brilliant feat of deduction, to leave everyone gasping with admiration, to make one's exit to the sound of great applause. Not so fast, Inspector. I'm still back there with that brilliant feat of deduction. You have not yet found this solution? Uh, just on the verge. Ah. Then I will drink to your success. Uh, with your brandy, of course, and with your permission. Go ahead, drink up a storm. But I'm afraid I'll have to leave you pretty soon, but you can still go No, ahead. no, 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 monsieur. I suggest you change your plans. You will learn nothing which has any bearing on this matter. Which plan do you mean? That of questioning the Countess de Atelier. Uh, who found that out? As a matter of fact, she phoned me and inquired about you. Oh, so that's how she investigated me. Went straight to headquarters. Ah, mais oui, mais oui. Ah, remarkable woman. Talented, beautiful. Et cetera, et cetera, and so on. And along with it, it's nine to one. She's in it right up to her pretty neck. Ah, no, 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 no. She's really not the type. Mm, this is an excellent brandy, monsieur. Uh, an Algerian brand. All right, Inspector, let's bypass the byplay and lay them out face up. I think I prefer it to cognac. I don't know how she does it, but she's got you hypnotized. Just mention of her name and you go into a tailspin, every cockeyed one of you. Exquisite. Love. Maybe so, but in my book, she's a real suspect. Uh, elucidate, monsieur. Well, it's simple enough. She's the only person in Algiers, that we're sure of at least, who knew that a shipment of diamonds was coming in on that plane. Why? Because she's the one who ordered them. Uh, monsieur, it is even simpler. She could not have poisoned the courier because she was not on that plane. She could not have stolen the briefcase from the custom property agent because it was done by a man. So, psst, where is your case? An accomplice, a man, with the countess calling the shots for him. What man, monsieur? Well, you got a good point there. <laughs> Merci bien, monsieur. Don't mention it. But from the influence she seems to have, it might be any man in Algiers. Inspector, it wasn't you by any chance. Hmm. You raise a very interesting point. Now, suppose the Countess should ask me to kill someone for her. I wonder what I would do. A 
page boy came into the dining room looking for me. I followed him out and took the phone call in the hotel lobby. It was the American consulate with some information I'd asked for them earlier. I hung up finally and looked at my watch. I was already late for my appointment with the countess. So I walked out the door of the hotel and flagged a taxi to the apartment of the Countess de Tolia. She lived in the swank Gentil Bois de Loué, a residential district favored by top government officials and wealthy French businessmen. But the building she lived in was a little frayed around the edges, and the maid she'd mentioned was nowhere in sight. The pieces were starting to fit together. Good evening, Mr. Dollar. Countess? Since you are here, won't you come in? Thanks. This way, please. I'm rather surprised that you came. I was really not expecting you. Yes, I know. Did uh, Inspector Marcus find you? Uh, look, suppose we get it straight right now. You seem to have a lot of influence with the inspector and probably with his superiors, too, from what I hear. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. Well, do we play cat and mouse for a while, or do you want to give up right now, hand them over, and, as they say, throw yourself on the mercy of the court? I would like a cigarette. You could always claim that you fell in with evil companions or that a man led you astray. There in the box there by your elbow. A tall, thin man, for instance, with his collar turned up and his hat pulled down, carrying a gun when last seen after slugging a customs agent at the Algiers airport. Mr. Dollar, are you opposed to smoking on moral ground? No, but I'm opposed to murder. Have a cigarette? Thank you. Light? Is there any other way of smoking, then? <laughs> Mr. Dollar, I expected you to come here and be annoying, but I didn't know you were going to be insulting as well. That's just my mean personality. You seem to be under the ridiculous impression that I actually had something to do with this crime. I think you had plenty to do with it. A sort of uh, arch criminal, perhaps? Or what is it you call them in the States? Uh, Big shot? Oh, Countess, you're a scream. I'll bet that courier died laughing. If you have a reason for these opinions, or believe you have a reason, I think you'd better tell me about it. Otherwise, good night. Oh, I I have more than one reason. In the first place, I'm not certain that anyone besides you even knew the diamonds were being sent here. Except for the Lorco Company, of course, and they wouldn't be likely to advertise it. Mr. Dollar, all of my friends and most of my acquaintances have known for three weeks that I'd ordered that jewelry. Oh? Well, I have a copy here of a letter that was sent to you by registered airmail from the Lorco Company in Amsterdam a week ago today. According to post office records, you received it two days later. Remember it? Yes, I remember. It states the name, flight number, and time of arrival of that courier who was murdered. I said I remember And it cautions you specifically not to give that information to anybody. So even if other people did know, you're the only one who knew the exact time the diamonds were coming in and exactly who was bringing them. All right. Perhaps I am at fault in a way. There was a cocktail party at the government club the same evening I got the letter... I forgot for a moment and told someone about it. Who? Just a girl I happened to be talking What's to. What's her name? It doesn't matter. She was just stopping over on a world cruise. Anybody else here? I don't know. The place was packed. Government men, business people, army, navy officers. Anyone might have heard. Uh-huh. Was Inspector Marcus at the party by any chance? Yes. I spoke with him during the evening. Mr. Dollar, I'll admit I was wrong, but there is hardly grounds for it. All right, let's get to point three. The Countess Maria D'Atalia, Italian by birth, title inherited, old family, goes back through one line, in fact, to Lucretia Borgia. I did not poison the courier. Your family estates were confiscated by Mussolini. Family migrated to Bizerti, and then to Lisbon for three years. You left them there and went on to London. Since the war, you've lived in Paris, on the Riviera, back to London, Mallorca, and finally here. Have you been following me, Mr. Dollar? The consular was pretty thorough. Anyway, you're well known in the international set, accepted everywhere, and apparently able to get along fine on your title and your looks. It is not very pleasant to be dissected while one is still alive. As a matter of fact, your flat broke. You've been living on credit for the last four months. I think you have gone about far enough. And yet three weeks ago, you ordered $100,000 worth of jewelry sent to you on approval. How did you plan to pay for it? Get out. Or did you know you wouldn't have to pay for it because it was never going to be delivered? Get out of here. 
I don't have to listen to this. I don't have to answer your insulting questions. My private affairs are my own concern. So the ice finally melted, and now you're going to blow your top. Get out or so help me, I'll kill you. You mean me, too? You... Oh, oh no, you... hey, put that down. Don't throw that. Why, you little devil. Stay back. Let go of me. Settle down, then. And stop throwing things. I will do as I please. It is a my house. So far as... <laughs> Good Lord. A woman who can even cry beautifully. Oh, leave me alone. Oh, you're unbelievable, baby. The boys were right. You're everything they said you were. Oh, it's too bad. Go away. All right. But before I do... When are you going? No, don't, don't... Why did you kiss me? It beats me. Just call it a sudden impulse. Then you have changed your mind. You don't really think I'm guilty. Oh, honey, I still think you're in this up to your ears. And I'll still bring you to trial if I can. And I still want to kiss you. You figure it out. Why figure, Johnny? I liked it too. Oh, you ought to be locked up. If for no other reason, just to protect the guys who... What is it, Johnny? What are you going... That cigarette in the ashtray. Put it out fast. Get the windows open, all of them. Where's your kitchen? Back through the hall. Johnny, what are you going to do? Stay alive if I can. It was gas fumes, one of the bottled gases they use for cooking in the higher-priced apartment districts. The concentration had been building up and finally seeped into the drawing room. If we'd lit another match, we'd have been blown to bits. The kitchen was dark, but I didn't dare snap a light switch. One spark would do it. So I held my breath and followed the sound and finally found the range. Every burner valve was wide open. I could vaguely make out a glass chain door opening onto a terrace. I grabbed a breath of air and moved toward another door that looked as though it might open into a hall. It didn't. It opened into a closet, and on the closet floor there was a body. What happened, Johnny? Why did you go... Johnny, who's that? He's a man from the Lorco Company. Name is Zeindorf. Zeindorf? But where did you find Out him? Out there on the floor of a closet. But why? What was he doing here? You tell me. I don't understand it. He has no business here. What is wrong with him, Johnny? Well, right at the moment, he seems to be a little bit dead. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Lorco Diamonds matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, a desperate fight in an Algiers alley, a killer is named, and a lovely lady confesses her shame. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.